Yo! Welcome back to Prone to Play and my Let's Play series of Satisfactory. Today in episode 3 we are going to continue our progress through the first milestones of tier 1 and tier 2. Where tier 1 is basically already completed. Um, in between the last episode and this one I was a little bit busy chopping down this whole forest section. As you can see, <laughs> there's barely any flora left, but as a result, we have quite a lot of solid biofuel to work with in this episode, so running out of energy, as we just did, should not be any issue whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, I also did some research regarding the biomass burners, and I was wrong apparently in the last episode since the only difference between the biomass burners attached to the hub seems to be the lower output of megawatts and the burn rate should be the same as well as the throttling when there is less power needed than the capacity. So that means if we are turning on all the power and we have a maximum capacity of 150 megawatts but the requirements are only around 79 I think with this setup then the burn rate will automatically turn down and only produce the provided energy that's necessary in order to keep the system running and these yeah the reducing uh, the um, the reducing amount of uh, of fuel will also be divided equally by all attached biomass burners. So we don't have to worry about burning too much fuel or wasting fuel, but I still want to yeah, ignore the two biomass burners over there since they are reduced output anyways. And I will simply fill up all these biofuels and then there shouldn't be any issues of power whatsoever during this episode. Um, yeah, another thing that I did was a lot of research regarding uh, recording <laughs> and creating content basically since I still was unsatisfied with the audio and I once again underestimated the volume of the game sound. I, for one, played a lot around with filters for audio and experimented a little bit. I'm still, yeah, trying to figure out the perfect setup or the best possible setup for me, but at least now the background noises and the mouse clicking and the, uh, yeah, unwanted sounds should be filtered out and also now the audio tracks of my voice recording and the gameplay are separate so even if the game is still too loud at the moment I will be able to filter this out in the future. Okay, we are still producing solid biofuel which is good but let's get started. I think that's basically everything that I wanted to address from the last episode and yeah I also added a little to-do list uh, which is inspired by what Darren plays this is yeah the, the content creator which I watch regarding satisfactory and I really love his episodes and his playstyle and going through everything so this is where I took my inspiration for also showing a lot of my building process and not cutting everything out and just showing an immense setup without the um, without the process on the way so yeah and he showed how to do uh, private notes or yeah private notes on the to-do list as well i will keep this reinforced iron plate recipe on so i can access the to-do list easier and yeah, so you have also an overview of what's planned for today. And let's take a first things first. I want to go to a specific point which is right next to our current basis. 
and there we will get a glimpse of the first crash site in our playthrough. There it is. So all around the map, all around the world here, you will find sites like this and not only do they provide various amounts of items which are laying around such as screws and wire which we are already producing very many of but also sometimes you have the luck to find more advanced stuff in this case this is modular frames and we need them in order to unlock the blade runners in a few minutes but yeah the most important thing of each crash site is the drop pod the drop pod is basically a crashed um, container which needs maintenance in order to unlock the door attached to it and yeah each maintenance requirement is different in this case it needs power sometimes it needs items sometimes it needs both and sometimes very rare though um, there's no maintenance needed whatsoever but mostly most of the time you have to do stuff in order to get the contained item and since we can cover the additional 50 megawatts with our current power output already I will simply extend the power temporarily and attach it to the drop pot it broke down? why? oh I forgot to turn on the switches for the last Biomass bonus. God damn it. Let me fix that in a second. But I can already tell you what will be found in these drop pods. There will be some hard drives, and these again can be researched. Up and running. Perfect. Okay. These again can be researched in the MAM in order to unlock alternate recipes. This will be explained when, once we uh, get access to the hard drive again. But yeah, alternate recipes are very useful in this game and we will require a lot of them later on in, in later stages. But yeah, I think the AI will give an explanation once I pick up this hard drive. Data on the hard drive has been salvaged and can be repurposed to unlock an alternate recipe. Salvaging more hard drives will provide additional alternate recipes. Yes, that's basically everything. That's basically everything that's uh, to say about this. And this will take actually 10 minutes. So I also have to do some research regarding the Blade Runners and I don't want to interfere with that but since I have to pick up some stuff for the Blade Runners anyways um, I think I can start these, this research now and come back to a later point. So yeah, we have to pick this up in 10 minutes and then it will show us three options of different alternate recipes of items in this game and then yeah, we can choose one of it Eventually we will pick up every single alternate recipe in the game since there are currently four more hard drives available than alternate recipes in the game. But um, yeah, especially it depends a little bit on the luck in the very beginning what you get offered first. Um, I don't know if it's related to stuff that you have unlocked up to this point and it will not offer things that uh, you don't have access to yet but I think it will just randomly select anything so we just have to hope that it will be something useful for us at the very start and yeah maybe it might be even something that will help us setting up um, the factory that is planned later down the line but for now this is basically what I planned for the research so we can take this off and next up I want to prepare the Blade Runners and in order to do that we need to get some more silica and also the modular frames that I just picked up they are also required in order to um, unlock them and build them 
So this is basically the workaround that I don't have to craft them manually at the moment or um, build up a setup uh, for producing them before I get access to the Blade Runners. I didn't plan this out before the before the start of the series in this detail, but I'm still glad that it turns out this way and I will have access to the Blade Runners this soon and you will see in a minute why that is when I demonstrate the difference with and without Blade Runners and yeah I will let these portable miners fill up since I don't have more use of the raw quartz at the moment and uh, yeah we will continue once I have a couple of hundred raw quartz. And there we are again with 200 raw quartz available. I will simply leave this be and uh, <coughs> extract more raw quartz for the future so in case I need more I can simply run back here and pick this up. Actually I just remembered that I forgot something on the to-do list and let me add these really quick in between here. Since we can unlock the Blade Runners before progressing further down the milestone line, we cannot build it since we need to um, also, I think, rotors to produce some rotors in order to build the Blade Runners in the equipment workshop, but I can check in a minute. And we also have the basic stuff available already for the first milestone of tier 2. I simply have to go and pick up some more iron plates, which I will do in a minute, but everything else I can already feed in here. And all that's left, shown as in the top right corner, we already unlocked. I'm just making sure that I have enough of everything. And then I will simply pick up some more iron plates. And then we can already complete our second milestone of tier 2. And yeah, I will show you in a second what this will unlock. So with the current milestone we will unlock an assembler. I can show you that once we can build it. And yeah, it says right there what it does. It crafts two parts into another part and uh, it has two inputs and one output. We also get an additional copper item, the copper sheet. I can add it to the formula right over here or maybe set up something new. I'm not decided yet. And yeah, we have the rotors, we have the modular frame and we have the smart plating. And let me just finish the milestone really quick so we can take a look at it first hand milestone reach more complex assembly of parts can now be automated project assembly parts can now be constructed and sent up via the space elevator note project parts are too complex to produce by hand yes now we can fuse two different things into one more complex part and let me simply craft some rotors already since the assemblers require rotors, reinforced iron plates and cable. And I just put down one for now. Yes, and here we have four items available at the moment which we can craft in an assembler. For example, a reinforced iron plate which requires iron plates and screws, modular frames which again requires reinforced iron plates, iron rod, and then the rotor with rods and screws. So basically these stuff, uh, these items uh, require very basic items and then get more, more and more complex down the line. And the smart plating again, which is our first project part and has to be fed into the space elevator, will be built out of reinforced iron plates and rotors. And this is why I want to set up a factory line where I build 
the rotors and the reinforced iron plates separately and then can directly fuse them into one assembler and produce the smart plating. So yeah, we will not tackle the modular frame just now since it's not needed for the first phase and I already have picked up some uh, at the crash site. So yeah, this is the plan for the factory side. And let me just check really quick, can we tackle something else? We also have the resource sync bonus program available already, but we have to wait for the freighter another four minutes or so anyways. And for the logistics mark two milestone, we need more reinforced iron plates. I'm not in the mood to craft them manually, so let's set up the factory first. But before that, let's check how much time is left. One minute on the hard drive. And while waiting, I can simply already prepare some silica since we only need 20 more raw quartz in order to get the recipe for silica. And then we can see what's needed for Blade Runners, which is silica and modular frames. So let me simply prepare some silica already while we have to... Oh, I can't <laughs> since uh, I don't have the recipe yet, damn it. <clears throat> okay, what I can do instead is prepare another portable miner for the factory side, since we need two miners at least for the setup that is planned. Everything else is not necessary for the moment. Am I good on resources? I think I am. I will take the time to prepare some more reinforced iron plates because we can never have enough of them. We will need quite a few constructors for the plant setup, but yeah, I will take you with me further down the line. And the research is complete. So, oh, what a coincidence. We got a recipe for the iron plate, an alternate recipe. Okay, what do we have here? We have the bolted iron plate, which takes 90 iron plates per minute and 250 close to screws and then produces reinforced iron plates. Okay, what's the standard recipe? The standard recipe is 30 iron plates and 60 screws, I think, if I multiply it right. But we triple the output per minute. Then again, we cannot feed that many screws at the moment since our conveyor belts are not good enough. Um, we will soon be able to transport 120 items per minute, but it's still only 50%, so it's, it's barely better than the standard recipe. The next one is the copper alloy ingot, where we fuse iron ore with copper ore in order to get copper ingot. This is not interesting for me at the moment, since we have one concrete setup, um, which is straightforward and the output is more than sufficient for our needs at the moment. Um, Okay, so it's in between these two and we cannot access this either yet. But I think it will take some time until we get these advanced conveyor belts. And until then I want to pick up several more hard drives. So yeah, maybe we will guess we will get this later and we cannot feed this in anyway. So let's just go with the alloy ingot for now. I don't know exactly when we get the foundry, but yeah, eventually I plan to get all of the recipes anyway, so for now, for, for, for the very moment, it does not really matter. Let's just take it. Okay, and next up we have silica. And then we New need 50 silica. And then we need 50 silica in order to unlock the blade runners. Let me just craft this really quick.
that's done. Late Runners Research. New equipment unlocked. Let's check what do we need for this. Yes, we need 20 silica and we have the remaining stuff. And also, I just saw another research that I want to fulfill. First of all, just for good measurement, we can unlock this. And then we already get a glimpse of the stuff that lies ahead of us, but we will tackle this at a later point. Um, this is not necessary for us at the moment. And yeah, we will get automotive. Um, we will get cars later down the line, but we also can unlock a different car in the milestones. And yeah, this is basically the fastest one this, that is available in the game. And we will get this because I want this in any ways, but not now. What I do want now though is the plus six inventory slots and yeah, you run out of inventory space very often in this game and the more you have the better. So I want to produce the 200 silica um, right now, which is why I picked up a little bit more raw quartz and I hope that I can I think I'm quite a bit short because I need a little bit for the Blade Runners. Let me just see, I think it was 20. Yes, okay, so let's do these first. These are priority number one. And now we have Blade Runners. Do we see them? Yes, we do. Okay. Nice. Now, uh, this is so satisfying that I got this already. And yeah, let me just demonstrate the difference really quick. So this is basically jumping without and running. And then with them, it's you jump much higher. And also you take less fall damage. For example, if I jump down this lookout tower, Without them, I think I'll lose a little bit less than two squares. And if I put them back on again, barely a half. But I think if, if this ground would be straight, I wouldn't take any damage at all. Okay, that's good. And now I can pick up the raw quartz faster as well. So let me just get to the portable miners again, pick some more quartz and I'll be back in a minute when I crafted the silica. And all set. Okay, we have 200 silica. Let's just unlock these inventory slots, shall we? Pocket dimension has been inflated. Very good. Okay, that's that. So now research is really done. I think we did everything that we could for the moment. And yeah, not no need for any more quartz at the moment. Instead, the drop pod came back as well. So let's just finish this milestone since we can. Milestone reached. You have been given early access to the anti-waste effort for stress testing of materials on exoplanets bonus program. Funneling parts into the awesome resource sink, depending on their amount and complexity, will grant you coupons in the awesome store, which can be exchanged for bonus rewards. Examples of bonus content are parts, walls, factory attachments, and cosmetics. Fixit is working hard to develop additional options, which will be added to the awesome store in the future. Go that extra kilometer. Go awesome. 
Yes, so this is basically it. Um, we have one very big shredder with a conveyor belt input. It requires power and at the moment we don't have any access so it's no need to set up one. Although we really need the points in order to get some tickets out of this. Which we can then spend again in the awesome shop. And this stuff here is really helpful. It's a lot of cosmetics, it's a lot of handy stuff. For example, you have wall power outlets when we build really factories, not these uh, temporary setups or starting setups. And you have different kinds of ramps, you have different kinds of walls, glass, architecture. We will need this one though in order to mess a little bit with the um, sniping in this game. And you also will be able to get your hands on different sty styles of uh, foundations. At the moment we have the standard one, but you also have coated concrete, normal concrete, concrete, excuse me, asphalt, and same goes for walls and roofs. Some paintings, a little factory card, which is only really usable on foundations and not for um, traveling. A fun boombox, but we will get to this later on. And also, while um, completing milestones, we will unlock additional items in the awesome shop as well. But not now. Instead, what do we do next? I think we select the Mark II milestones. Um, we don't need it for now, but maybe I will prepare the stuff. No. Um, next up, let me first. Oh, I erased the reinforced iron plates on the to do list. Um, let me toggle off the milestones, the blade runners. Why didn't you save? Okay, perfect. Next up, we are going to decide on a new factory plant for our rotor, reinforced plates and smart plating line. Do I have everything what I need? Let me just, in order to be sure, pick up as much stuff as I can carry. Can never have enough iron plates. Do we have concrete? No, we don't. Good that I checked. Um, do I have cable? Yes, but why not? And then some concrete. How are we looking on the fuel? Less than half consumed. Perfect. So while we are setting up, the basic parts are getting manufactured in the meantime. Okay, so let's see if we find some iron ore. I think it's best to go further down the line where we came from. Um, as you can see, while looking for the crash site and wandering around a little bit, I checked this area here at the right which is already shown on the map and uh, discovered because there are two normal iron ores very close to each other which is basically a perfect setup. Oh, what do I see there? There's our first blue slug. Yeah, and I can explain with this thing very perfectly because in this game there are also artifacts. And when you come close to one, this will happen. Harvest. So there are various different voice lines in this game which get triggered when you come close to an artifact. This is the second type of artifact and the game wants you to pick it up. But yeah, they're currently work in progress so you can't do anything with it. Um, but when you don't pick them up, the voice lines will get triggered over and over and over and over again. You are so lucky that you found this most valuable artifact. And yeah, I was wandering around at the right side of the map and looking for the, yeah, planning a little bit for the, um, for the factory. And this got repeated over and over. So there should be an artifact somewhere, but I can't 
find it. I, I was not able to see it, I, I couldn't access it. Maybe it was hidden somewhere behind stuff that's uh, not available for me or accessible for me at the moment. But it drove me crazy, so I, I couldn't bear off... Um, yeah, I was... I couldn't be bothered to build up a factory right over there where every 10 seconds there will be a creepy voice whispering in my ear to um, pick up some stuff that I can't find. So yeah, let's instead go back a little bit from our spawn point uh, to our spawn point and see if we find a place where we can build up some foundations for our next factory line. Since this is a really big desert, we shouldn't be we shouldn't have any issues with space. But next up, let's just pick up this blue power slug. This semi-slug seems to emit unfamiliar energy readings, which could potentially be retrofitted into Fixit technology. A new research tree can now be accessed in the MAM. Since I don't want to run all the way back, let's just build a temporary MAM here. And we unlocked the research tree of power slugs. So since we picked one up. Yeah, I, I already picked up a yellow one, but this event seems to be triggered only if you pick up the blue one, which is the most basic one of the different slugs. Yes, this is the, um, the following research tree, where you have to unlock a scan of... Uh, yeah, you can basically unlock the ability to scan for slugs with the uh, object scanner. I will build this one later, but uh, since I'm not exploring that much at the moment, I have no need for it. Also, we can use a yellow power slug, which we have two of already, in order to um, yeah get the recipe for another power shard for yellow slugs, because the blue one gives you one power shard per slug. The yellow one, I think, gives you two or three, I'm not 100% sure, but more. And when we get our first power shard, we also can unlock overclock production. Um, I mentioned this, I think, in the very first episode, that this is part of the game as well. And yeah, this will come ha in handy as well with uh, yeah efficiency ratio and setting up the, the most possible uh, um, yeah the best possible efficiency within a factory stream um do i go back and pick up another slug in order to get a power shot and maybe we find a blue power slug in here i see another artifact already i don't want it leave me alone okay good Maybe I will decide on a new factory site first. Okay, here is an iron ore. There is one, there is one. This is normal, this is normal, and this is pure even. Okay, for the setup that I have in mind, two normal nodes are sufficient. So maybe I will just pick these and build a factory setup in between them. Uh, and feed them, yeah, feed the iron from both sides. Let's see. A hawk, oh, yeah, I, I didn't see one of them yet. Since we have to gather the remains of this, maybe let's, let's just pick it up. No, I don't, oh, if I'm... <laughs> If I'm planning on building up a factory site here, actually. Relaying message. Hello, this is Patrol Figure. I have taken ill and need your help to find a cure. Doctors say that the only remedy is alien artifacts. Yeah, this was one of the longer voice lines. So you see why I was freaking out having this constantly babbling in my ear and um, yeah. I couldn't build a factory site where this is happening all the time. Also, I think this is the very edge of the map. And yeah, there's no real point in 
strafing even further away from the center when we will progress further in the desert instead. Um, I just saw a blue slug, I think. Did I pick it up? Yes, I did. Oh, okay, sorry. So, yeah, let me just unlock overclock really quick with the power shard. Putting down the mam. And we have everything we need for overclocking. Okay, I didn't hear the voice. I hope the game is not bugged out. But since we now can overclock items, we can also underclock them. Mm, just to show an example, if we have a power shard in our hands, the usual clock speed, yeah, this was covered before, but now it's accessible. And usually the 100% clock speed of a constructor is 30 iron ingots in, 20 iron plates out per minute. But you can overclock this with putting in a power shard to 150, 200, and the maximum overclocking is 250 in this game, but then you also need three power shards. There are a couple hundreds of slugs in this game overall, so yeah, eventually this won't be any issue, but for the start um, we only will get our hands to on a couple of power shards, so this is there's no point in bothering um, with that at the moment. But at the same time, we can simply underclock machines without any input whatsoever. And this will be actually come in very handy for the setup that I planned, now that I think of it. Um, is there anything else? Wow, so much so much content. New technologies can be developed based on this new superconductive gold-like element, primarily in power and electronics. A new research tree can now be accessed in the MAM. Yes. Katerian is another topic in this game, but I don't want to overload and um, I will tackle this when the time comes. But for now, let's just start with our factory setup, shall we? Okay, where is the next node? Yeah, this is the one. This is the... Oh, there's another impure here, but impure is not sufficient enough at the moment so the next one is over there so good to be able to jump and, fa and run faster yeah here okay so the factory site will be somewhere here in between and I will have to build a little bit higher than this ground here because yeah the factory will a little bit bigger will be a little bit bigger than what we have already set up and i hope this is not any issue that there is a little bit of an incline here as well oh that was not correct but let's see yeah it's not pretty but it gets the job done Facing in this direction. Mm, okay, let me just put down some foundations as the basic ground for the setup. I think for now I will feed them feed the ore in from both sides and then face all the machines into the north direction but yeah it 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 doesn't really matter just snapped okay that's number two and i will care about the uh, power input when everything is set up okay let me think, how do we start? We start with four smelters. Mm. Okay, 
Let's start from this direction. One, two. Did I leave one space? Yes, I did. What I'm trying to do in this game also is to give me enough space all the time. Because sometimes when you lay out something and you plan uh, a production site, then most of the time um, <laughs> you will run out of space eventually because there was something you didn't consider or some plans changed or something is not the way you intended it to do. Um, or you want to expand something later down the line, anything uh, yeah, that will mess up your plans. So it's always better to plan a little bit bigger than not big enough. That's this clip, I think so. Let's see. Barely. It's fine, it's fine. At least I'm getting the right angles now. Advancing further and further. Okay, what's the setup? The first thing is we need iron plates. Um, and we actually need to split half of one smelter into the other line, merge it here again, hello, wrong direction, I'm just remembering I was intending to improve my hotkey bar and um, yeah get used a bit to it a little bit more since I have the habit now to simply open the build menu with Q and really quickly um, choose what I need at the moment. But yeah, I think it will become in more handy in the long run to get used to using the hotkey bar a little bit more. Another goal for the next episode. Let's leave some space in the center. Right. Align this. See, one, two. No, no right angle. That's one. And that's two. Okay, so now these two constructors will get 45 iron ingots in total. And we actually need exactly. Um, 45, no, 30 iron plates per minute for our production goal. So we both underclock the left and right machine to 75%, which adds up to exactly 45 iron ingots per minute. And yeah, the power output for the moment will be the same actually since the biomass burners adjust themselves um, to the consumption but yeah it's it's good to get this habit since it avoids flickering of the um, power grid um, since the the input of the megawatts will be um, the input of the power will be stable and this will be more important for the automated power resources because biomass burners are actually the only power resource that does this throttling and the other ones will simply put out a stable um, power amount so yeah it's best to keep everything stable so you will not tip over the limit of the uh, capacity of your power line so why not start getting comfortable with uh, over and under clocking already Okay, then we can simply merge these together. And that's iron plate already done. 
Yes, now we still have an excess of 15 iron ingots here. We can um, merge it into the other line. And everything else will be iron rods for the start. So let's just oh, simply snap them next to each other with control and put down five constructors. Four, five. Then how do I do this? I think Yeah, usually I would have merged the ingots first, but I built a little bit too sh let's let's just fix fix this. It's uh, basically the same result um, whether or not I merge the iron ingots first, but just for the looks, let's just do it. Uh, where do these align? Maybe I will. Yeah, they can come back once more. One, two, three, four, five. Then we merge all three iron ingot lines remaining. One, two, and we get this all the way here, three. This will take some time to transport the needed iron ingots over here, but it's basically irrelevant for the start. And now we split. Actually, what I've never tried is starting the input from the center. Usually I will simply get some merging lines uh, down one line when you have a row of machines like this and yeah merge them all and have the exit on one side and then if they need to be converted into future items into um, another item basically what will happen right here from the smelters let's say i merge them here and then i will turn down the uh, turn around the conveyor line and split them all equally into these constructors starting from this point but what will happen is the splitter will split everything equally so this will get 50 percent and uh, this here 50 percent will arrive so will be split equally again so yeah it will get the the amount of transported goods will be halved all the time and the very last um, machine will only get a fraction of the transported line it will resolve itself in the end because this one will f um, run full back up then this one will back up and so on and so forth but it will result into a little bit of stuttering at the very start at least there's the possibility that this happens so yeah let's simply start in the middle so the splitting is not that fractioned because now everything will be split equally from here and here these two will get 25 percent in total no 33 actually since uh, yeah it will be even better since we feed one third into here and not starting by feeding 50 percent into the first machine um yeah it will run a little bit smoother i think it's turning dark let me put on my flashlight you saw me <laughs> in the last episode always trying to jump on the uh, splitters or mergers in order to align stuff and now I'm realizing why that is because I was used to having Blade Runners on and you can simply do this jump by just tapping the spacebar but uh, last episode it wasn't working because I had to get on the conveyor belt first and then jump up into yeah onto the uh, merger or splitter respectively. Do I get this into a right angle or do I really care? No, this one has to be fine for now. Okay, so all the ingots are processed or will get processed. 
these are feeding in 45 will be split no 75 excuse me 75 ingots will be split up between these five constructors taking in 15 each perfect and by ctrl c and ctrl v we do not have to access each constructor individually but can copy and paste a recipe instead which is a lot faster i hope i'm not rushing with my information i do know that i'm building yeah a little bit too fast for beginners but at the same time um yeah this is not a tutorial or something i simply want to take you on the journey with me of building up stuff and um, since i already have this knowledge i try to lay out what i'm doing as good as possible but <clears throat> yeah might be too uh, it might be too fast for completely beginners there are tons of good tutorials for new starters so yeah if this is too fast to follow i apologize but at the same time i am also talking way more than i'm usually doing so yeah i think i will just keep on going and see how i feel since this is fun actually okay that's rods done what's next we need 60 screws for the reinforced iron plates and we need another 100 for the rotors that's 160 so we need four constructors are these in the wrong direction no they aren't let's maintain some distance so I have enough space to um, configure the logistics in between. This might even not be enough. Yeah, it, I think it, it will be fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, since we want to build both reinforced iron plates and rotors, we need... I'm always talking in ratios per minute. So yeah, um, I just said we need 60 screws per minute in order to produce... 100% efficient reinforced iron plates and we also need 100 screws per minute for the rotors so that's 160 in total which can easily be converted by crafting rods into screws and if we take 40 rods out of these 75 we will get the exact amount of 160 screws per minute mm, and we need 40 do we Yes, so that's 15, 30, and we need to split another 10 from here. How do we do this? We build a merger facing to the right, and we split two third from here. Yeah, I even did not leave enough space for my plan. But we split 2 thirds into here, which is 10 out of 15. And the remaining 5 will merge into this line. Um, and then again we merge. Do I have to do it this complicated? Let me see. Uh, each line needs 10. Yeah, I can show you what I usually do. And if you have any suggestions how I could tackle this more smoothly just let me know but let's just fuse this all into one line and now we have 40 rods per minute coming out here and then we split this up equally let's start here Actually, let's pull it down a little bit further. So we don't interfere with this line. Should be good. Add another line. It's a little bit too extended. And then we place four constructors again. One, two, 
three. I was thinking about whether the last constructor would be no more necessary on the right side or on the left, but it's basically irrelevant. And then another splitter. Into here. And this will build or craft screws and then we have 10 20 25 rods remaining looking good at least in my opinion okay and now it's time to finish our first part of the assembly line which requires our first assembler Let's do it here so we don't waste too much space, basically. This is even too far on the left side, and the output should be here. And we can feed in our iron plates. 30 per minute, getting produced here, perfect. And then we need 60. So we take our first constructor, split up the output of the second one, uh, I remember that I maybe should do it like this by pressing E. So we have 20 plus 40, 60 going down this line creating right angles, is this straight, now it's maybe here, is this sufficient, no, here, now it's too far, god damn, Okay, now it's straight. Yes, and this is our first assembly line done. Here our reinforced iron plates can back up into a container. And this is one third of our factory setup. Fully completed, or one third of our lines completed. The next one is rotors. And I think I'm missing some rotors in order to put down the assembler for the rotors actually. I'm missing both reinforced iron plates and rotors. I hope I was not too wasteful with my resources so I have enough still in stock to craft all this. That's the first and that's oh I think I have plenty and yeah. If I'm missing something, I will simply run back and pick it up. Mm. I will need a third assembler at the very end, but for now, let's just focus on finishing one thing at a time. It was too steep. Um, let me double check again. What do I need for the rotors? I need rods and screws. So. I can feed it out here and do the same thing that I did on the one side, uh, on the first, on the on the right side. First things first. Let me merge this, this, this. our remaining screws. Actually, this will produce an excess of five rods per minute, and I'm thinking about whether or not I'm sorting these five out into a different container so we can build up more excess. But then again, it's only five rods. Yeah, maybe 
I'm not using that many at the moment since the container at the basis is backing up anyways. But yeah, I will consider whether or not I will do this later. Um, for now it's fine. Okay, let's just put this in line and feed this over. It's not showing here. No, that's one too far. And then we feed these screws around the corner. Here is an excess, yes, here's another 20, that's 60, that's 100, and actually our belt is too slow in order to transport 60 screws per minute. And I have to unlock the next milestone in order to upgrade this to a Mark II conveyor belt to be able to feed in 100 screws per minute in here. Now it's limited to 60, but yeah, for now I just want to get this up and running. And um, once we have produced some reinforced iron plates automatically, we can finish our, sec uh, our next milestone regarding Mark II logistics and finish, um, uh, improve, uh, excuse me. And then we can upgrade this conveyor belt. Um, let's do another storage container for the outcoming rotors. These are actually very far apart from each other because there is one more thing to do. But it's not... It's no problem. And I will explain what I'm thinking about in a minute. That's two thirds of our construction line. And the last step is to craft these smart platings, which cannot be crafted manually anyways, as the game just explained. So, where's the center of this? I don't actually know, but it doesn't matter. Let's just put it here. And in order to do smart plating, we use two rotors and two, enforced, uh, two reinforced iron plates per minute. And this will back up eventually after a very long time. But um, for now it will just run through. But since we are producing four rotors per minute eventually, when this is upgraded, um, and five reinforced iron plates, but we only need two per minute respectively, this will get back up as well. So I. In, instead of running to the storage containers, I can simply run to this assembler, pick out the backed up items, and yeah, it's basically the same effect, and uh, only in the long term this will get backed up. Let's just create some right angles. It's not necessary, but in my opinion, this is looking way better than just... Why did it snap? Oh, it snapped to the merger. Yeah, it's just looking way better than having uh, things running. How it snaps the best, or how it snaps directly. Nice. Okay. Let's just get a little overview of the results. So this is basically the whole factory. Ore feeding in from left and right, getting smelted, 
getting constructed into iron plates, rods, part of the iron rods get crafted then again into screws, which get fed back into the construction lines. And there we have reinforced iron plates, five per minute. We have four rotors per minute and we have two smart platings per minute. And all that's left is hooking everything up to power lines and getting the power up here. Do we see our bases in the distance? Yes, we actually do. Okay, it's not too far away, but I have to grab some cables and some poles and um, yeah, get the power all the way here. I can could also set up a different by uh, an additional biomass burner here or two or three I don't I will see I will first pick um, hook up everything to power lines here and take a look at the power grid what the maximum consumption is of everything and yeah I could I could set down some more biomass burners but then again if this would run out of power I would have to come back all the way here and I would prefer or I, I prefer to have all the power production at one spot so I can refuel everything uh, much easier yeah let me just tackle the power lines Okay, that is set already. So I dragged the power line all the way from the bases to here, um, connected everything up, and I will give you one little overview about the final results. Yes, so this is what the final setup looks like everything is connected to power in order to keep it nice and clean and steady I placed almost a power pole next to each individual machine aside from these smelters and yeah connected everything together the total power consumption of this setup if it's running at a hundred percent will be a hundred and fifteen megawatts and additional to our current power consumption, which is at most 79, this would have exceeded our five active biomass burners. So I added another two to the equation in order to achieve a capacity of 210 megawatts. So we don't get an outage once I connect this. And now we should see lights everywhere. The smelters should turn green, extracting the ore in a second and everything else should have a yellow light until an input is infused or inserted should I say. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, this is not the cleanest conveyor belt but well has to do and let's see is it working it is there comes the iron ore I was thinking at the very beginning to start somewhere around here since this is a very nice background and vegetation as well but yes for some reason I decided to start over there because the three different components are so close to each other and it's just for the starting point I think we will relocate very very soon um, yeah but I'm overall satisfied with the start and let's just watch it come to life a little bit first constructors for the iron plates are running 
the iron ingots for the plates and screws. It's a little bit far away. Are getting fed in. I just realized I have to improve this conveyor belt as well since we are exceeding the 60 over here since these are producing producing 30 each and we are feeding another 15 in here yes yeah this is backing up already okay so this one has to get increased into a mark 2 logistics conveyor belt and the one which is feeding the screws into the rotors as well but we already see the first rods produced. First rods are reaching the screws. Here they come. Getting fed into the assembler for the reinforced iron plates, which is backing up very rapidly on iron, for, on, uh, iron plates. Looking good, looking good. Is it backing up? No. Not yet, but it will eventually. And this will take a second until enough screws are fed in. I think for the start I will throw a stack of 500 screws into this assembler manually just to get it started. And there it goes. Taking 30 seconds for the first rotor and since there's nothing in here and we are continuing the factory line into the smart plating assembler, <coughs> this will run into the storage container and then <laughs> coming out directly again. But yeah, as I laid out earlier, this is fully intentional. There we have our first automated reinforced iron plates, eventually meeting with the first rotor. Looking good. Everything is working as intended. Some lights are turning yellow and green on and off again, but this is because of the insufficient conveyor logistics because of the missing upgrade at the very start and this will happen here as well um, yeah and then after some stuttering and some waiting time it will turn out to a manifold eventually which will run completely smoothly and yeah we're already producing our first smart plating oh it's almost done I've actually have not hooked up a storage container for this. Let's do it a little bit distant so we can see the smart plate coming out. And there it is. The first smart plating. For the start, in order to complete phase one, we only need a handful of these, but the demand will increase rapidly later on, so there's no harm in letting this run in the future as well. Nice. Looking good. I like it. Okay, but I think that's going to be it for this episode. Actually, let me toggle off just for good measurement. I crafted reinforced iron plates again, so I cannot access the edit, uh, the to-do list. Let's just put anything in there and toggle off the last thing. Uh, yeah. So this is everything for this episode. In the next one we will progress further down the milestones and I think we are already ready for building the space elevator since we have plenty of basic items we are already producing the first part of the space project uh, the first project part 
And I think in the next one we will complete the first phase, including all the milestones of tier 2, and then see what the game has to offer next. So, a lot achieved today. I'm very satisfied. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what you think. I would really appreciate your feedback, where you see room for improvement, um, what you like, what you didn't like. So let me know and I see you in the next one.